Are you ready to solve a problem which has appeared in 2009 MIT Physical Chemistry final exam? Hello everyone, this is Borna and welcome to my channel, The Genius Solver. Today we're going to solve a problem which has appeared in 2009 undergraduate level physical chemistry final exam at MIT. But note that mm, the problem we're going to solve today is a little bit different from the original one because we want to drive some of the information which was originally given in the question. Let's take a look at the question. Okay, so the question is asking to drive the energy level diagram of cyclobutadiene uh, for its pi electrons uh, based on Huckel molecular orbital theory. And as you can see on the right hand side, uh, the structure of cyclobutadiene um, is shown and there are three main assumptions to solve this question because it has two double uh, bonds, so we're going to assume that there are four pi electrons in in the system. The second assumption is that the system is flat and totally symmetric, so this means that all of these four sites, uh, as you can see, one, two, three, four, are equivalent. And the last assumption is that we're going to neglect all the interactions beyond nearest neighbors. So this means that, for example, site one, electrons on site one, um, interact with site two and site four, and they cannot interact, or we ignore the interaction between site one and site three. And it's the same for all other sites. In the original problem, um, you were given the Hamiltonian, but in this problem, we want to drive the Hamiltonian first, and then based on that, we're going to drive the energy level diagram. Uh, but before that, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss my new videos. And there's a fun fact about Eric uh, Huckel, who developed uh, a new molecular orbital theory. When he was teaching at the University of Zurich, um, he actually encouraged his students to write poems about their great professors. And uh, one of the most famous poems is about Erwin Schrodinger, a giant in the field of quantum mechanics. And it, it, it goes like this, which is of course translated to English. The original one is actually in, in German. Um, Erwin with his psi can do calculations quite a few, but one thing has not been seen. Just what does psi really mean? Um, hit the like button if you understand what's going on here. And actually this shows that um, many scientists um, actually are interested in, in poetry, but in their own manner. Alright, so um, let's take a look at the problem and see if we can um, write down the Hamiltonian as our first step. Because as you may know, energy is the eigenvalue of Hamiltonian, so you need to first write down the Hamiltonian and then solve um, for its eigenvalues. So according to the first assumption, we have four electrons in our system, which is in the pi um, level, so our Hamiltonian would be a 4 by 4 matrix. Uh, but we don't know the elements uh, of, of, these, of this Hamiltonian. Um, and if you remember, each of these elements uh, actually corresponds to the interaction between the ith and jth electron. And um, because the system is flat and totally symmetric, um, we, we're going to assume that the interaction between all immediate neighbors are the same. So the interaction between uh, 1 and 2 is the same as the interaction between 1 and 4. 3 and 4 and 3 and 2 because the system all is totally symmetric. So all of these elements would be the same, H12, H14, and, and so on and so forth. And so we're going we're gonna, to um, use two different parameters in order to uh, fill this matrix. And the first parameter is uh, actually corresponds to all of these uh, diagonal elements. And these diagonal elements um, are nothing but the energy of, of the electrons in, in 2p orbital because we're we're looking at the pi system, four electrons in pi system, and each of these electrons is actually in 2pz orbital if you're just looking at the atomic orbital uh, description of the system. And so h11, h22, 33, and 44 uh, are all the same, and we're assuming that it's just alpha. We don't know the value of the alpha, it's just a parameter. And uh, we're going to assume that the nearest neighbor coupling for example, between 1 and 2, 1 and 4, 2 and 3, 3 and 4 uh, are all the same and we'll just call it beta. So if you just um, put the, the values in the matrix, all of the diagonal elements would be alpha. And 
uh, if you look at the other elements, for example, H12. H12 is the interaction between 1 and 2, their nearest neighbor, so it's going to be beta. So, and H14, which is this element, is going to be beta 2. And so, if we fill up um, the remaining elements, we're going to uh, arrive at this matrix, but we still we're still missing some elements. H13 here, for example. Uh, and as you can see, because according to the question, we can ignore this. We can just assume that it's zero. There is no interaction between one and three, and it's it's also the same between two and four. Two and four, as you can see, they are not nearest neighbors. So the remaining elements will be zero. So um, so finally, we arrive at our Hamiltonian. So this is our Hamiltonian, which was originally given in the question. I was just wanted to uh, go over it and see how we can drive the Hamiltonian. So now we have the Hamiltonian we can easily drive the eigenvalues corresponding to this Hamiltonian by just solving the eigenvalue problem which is just a matrix algebra problem so in the next step we're gonna find these eigenvalues which are um, which is nothing but the energies so it's a 4 by 4 matrix so we need to have four eigenvalues um, and so we're gonna have four energies and in order to arrive in order to drive those energies we have to solve these determinants so the determinant of the Hamiltonian minus lambda lambda is the parameter that we're going to solve for and this is the identity matrix so this is nothing but just subtracting lambda from all of the diagonal elements of this Hamiltonian so if you write down the, the determinants we're going to arrive at this equation uh, which is the same as our initial Hamiltonian except we're going to have alpha minus lambda as our diagonal elements and the remaining elements are, are exactly the same so this is the determinant after um, um, writing down the determinant we're going to arrive at this equation alpha minus lambda squared times alpha minus 2 beta minus lambda times alpha plus 2 beta minus lambda equals 0 as you can see uh, we can easily find the four roots of this equation and um, these are the four roots uh, two of which are the same so alpha 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 minus 2 beta and alpha plus 2 beta uh, so this means that our energy level diagram uh, would have three different distinct energies um, and we're gonna actually say that the, the energy level which is equal to alpha is degenerate and we're going to have two orbitals with the same energy as alpha and so if we um, draw the energy level diagram uh, we're going to start with alpha plus 2 beta the reason is that because the interactions the coupling between the neighbor and neighboring atoms is, is actually negative so beta is actually negative so alpha plus beta is, is less than alpha and so we we'll start with that one and then we're going to write the next level we have two alpha I mean the energy equals to alpha so it's a degenerate level and then finally we have alpha minus 2 beta so we have four electrons now and in order to uh, fill up this energy level diagram uh, based on Hans rule we just need to fill up one by one so oh, we're gonna put the first two electrons in the first energy level and the remaining two we're gonna put each of them in each uh, orbital and as you can see this is um, not a stable uh, molecule based on the the theories because we have two unpaired electrons so basically cyclobutadiene is actually paramagnetic not diamagnetic so we have unpaired electrons um, which makes cyclobutadiene unstable um, I really hope you enjoyed this video uh, in the next video we're gonna actually derive the, uh, the the orbitals corresponding to these energy level diagrams which is which are nothing but the eigenvectors corresponding to this Hamiltonian um, if you if you like the video just hit the thumbs up and make sure to subscribe um, I'm gonna upload more videos 